So, um, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, my name's Simon Shaw. I'm the Director of Studies for um, the uh, BA in Criminal Justice and Criminology and the um, BSc in Social Sciences. Um, this morning, uh, we're going to have a very informal session where, whereby we talk to you about the two programmes. I'll be uh, just giving you an outline of the two programmes uh, for about the next 10 or 15 minutes. And then I'll hand over to my very good friend and colleague, um, uh, Dr. Bahar Sangera, who's going to be talking to you today about objectivity and values in the social sciences. There's also an opportunity for you to ask any questions uh, that you'd, you'd like at all to one of our star uh, third year students, uh, Zilan Keskin, uh, who will give you um, the, the, the student lowdown on uh, the experience of being a, 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 at the University of Kent, uh, Warts and all. Uh, but before we begin, uh, I'll just uh, outline very briefly um, what the two programmes look like, some of the opportunities that students who come to us will have uh, across the, um, the three years that they're with us. Um, and then I'll pass over to um, uh, Dr. Balaha Sangera. So why don't we start with the BA in uh, Criminal Justice and Criminology? Um, it's a, a three-year degree programme. Uh, in your first year of, of, of study, uh, you, we get you to take eight different, um, uh, different undergraduate modules. Um, there's Introduction to Criminology and Criminal Justice, um, two Sociology modules, um, uh, a Social History module, uh, and a, a, a couple of uh, Law modules, um, and two Methods uh, modules. Then in your second year of study, uh, you have much more choice. We get you to take um, three core modules in your second year. There, there's a core methods module, which will give you all the skills that you need to be able to understand the research that you're reading about, but also go on to do your own research projects, um, uh, both as part of that module and in your third year as well, if you want to do a, a dissertation on, on any topic that you find particularly exciting um, during your, your, your course of study. We also um, get you to take a, a social history module in your second year, which looks at the, the foundations and the origins of many of the criminal justice institutions that we have today. So you'll understand where the prison system that we have today comes from, where the probation system that we have today comes from, and how it's changed over the course of time. And then with me uh, in, in, in your second year, uh, we'll explore a whole range of the contemporary challenges facing the operation of the criminal justice system itself. Things like uh, the nighttime economy, things like the emergence of hate crime. And uh, we'll take quite a critical look at all of the um, various uh, criminal justice institutions, what's good about them, what's bad about them, some of the contemporary debates that, uh, um, that, that, um, that, that surround their operation in the modern age. And then um, that, that will take up about half of your, your uh, year of study in the second year. And the rest of the time, uh, we have a, an array of, of optional modules that you get to, to select, select between. So you can really pick and choose according to your own intellectual interests as much as anything else. And then in the third year of study, we give you carte blanche. So you can act, act, act with absolutely anything that you want to and really design your, your third year according to your own intellectual interests. I'll say a little bit more about some of the... the specialist degree, uh, degree uh, modules that we have uh, in a few minutes time. But uh, really you can design it according to whatever your own interests are. Many of our students really enjoy taking a dissertation, which is an opportunity for them to really explore any aspect of their study that, that they've been uh, very passionate about over the, 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 the course of their study. And really it allows them to, to focus in and, and find out new knowledge that really contributes something meaningful and original to the, 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 the discipline as a whole. And many of our students who take the dissertation uh, at the end of it say it's, it, it's been uh, the most enjoyable experience uh, throughout. Those of you who are interested in the social sciences degree program in, in a similar way has, have a very um, or, um, focused first year where we, whereby we get you to take eight different modules. Uh, uh, Many of these modules are shared with the Criminal Justice Degree Programme, but there are others uh, are uh, bespoke for the Social Sciences uh, Degree Programme itself. So there's things like the Introduction to Sociology, uh, an additional sociology module, 
an introduction to psychology instead of the law modules that we have our criminal justice students take. Then in your second year of study, those of you on the social science degree program get to take um, two core methods modules, which will prepare you to understand all of the, um, all of the, the, the research that you're reading in your studies and other modules, and also give you the skills that you need to undertake your own, um, your, your own research, both in the second and the third year, um, uh, more generally. Um, the rest of your time in both the second and third year is made up of designing your degree according to where your own intellectual interest See, so one of the real um, unique selling points about the social sciences degree program is that you can tailor make it according to what your own intellectual interests are. If you're particularly interested in things like uh, psychology, you can you can you can fill your studies up with psychology modules. Likewise, with sociology modules uh, or social history modules or social policy modules, and you can really design it according to to what it is that you yourself are interested. We also have what's known as a pathways program, which allows students to specialize in two disciplines. So for example, if you're particularly passionate about like sociology and psychology, you can um, fill up your, your studies with modules uh, from those two disciplines and receive a degree at the end of it, which says BSc in, psych in psychology and sociology. Equally, along the way, we have uh, additional opportunities for students who, who might want to, to take their studies in, in different directions. So across both programs, for example, we offer the opportunity for a year in professional practice, which allows students a year, year's break to go into, say, a criminal justice agency and work for a, a, a year getting first-hand skills in understanding how uh, the police work or victim support works and come back and reflect on that and, and how it relates to your, your broader field of study. Equally, we have an opportunity for students to go abroad for a year and, and, and study in different um, universities around the world. Um, this year, for example, we've had a couple of students who've gone to Hong Kong, but we also have connections with universities in other continents as well, uh, all around Europe, in Asia, um, and in North America as well. So, so if, if that's something that interests you, it's certainly something that we can uh, accommodate along the way. And we've also come up with whole, uh, very innovative and, and unique modules. If you don't want to take that additional uh, break in your studies and turn your, your um, degree from a three-year degree into a four-year degree, but you're interested in, in experiencing what it's like to work in, in the third sector, or within a criminal justice institution. We have a module that is, is um, a tailored for that experience. We get you to go out to these uh, uh, organizations to go volunteer 100 hours of your time so you can really see what it's like to be on the, on the cutting edge of um, within uh, criminal justice, or within um, the philanthropic or the third sector and, and uh, reflect on that and apply your academic understanding uh, that you've learned along the way on your degree program to your, your experience of actually being out in the field. We've also- Simon, are you, sorry to interrupt, are you taking questions at the end? Yes, uh, absolutely. No problem. Uh, I'll be I'm just writing them down. Okay. Um, there's also a, a range of new um, innovative uh, modules such as the, the summer school in urban where we take students out to Paris for a week in the summer and they get to engage with ethnographic practice within, within uh, the streets of, of Paris um, and immerse themselves in, in the city life of, 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 of the different country and come back and reflect on that in relation to what they've learned along the way. Equally, this year, uh, for the first time, we're rolling out our uh, Inside Out project, which gives students on the Criminology and Criminal Justice program an opportunity to go into prisons and learn alongside serving uh, prisoners and get academic credit for reflecting on their studies in the, in the confines of, of uh, the prison system itself. Um, equally, um, I'll, I'll just uh, for, for a couple of minutes say something about um, my amazing colleagues um, uh, who will teach you uh, on these two degree programs. Um, they're, they're all um, experts in, in their field um, and, and uh, engaged in, in first-hand research themselves. So 
many of the studies and, and the research projects that you will read about and learn about uh, along the way will be uh, written by and, and researched by some of our colleagues. Um, and um, much of their teaching uh, will, will, will be uh, research led. So you get to hear firsthand from the experts in the field about what the, the latest uh, developments within criminology or social sciences uh, actually are. And um, one of the other questions that we often get um, in relation to these two um, uh, um, uh, degree programs is what can we do with the, um, the degree at, at the end of uh, uh, the three years when, when we come to graduate. And in many respects, these two degrees open up a, a series of, of, of doors for people. I'm actually really proud of the fact that for both programs, we have quite a, uh, uh, one of the best um, employment records after uh, three and after six months of graduation. Um, and um, certainly, uh, for example, the, the criminal justice and criminology degree program um, has been uh, recognized by the, the criminal justice sector as um, uh, investing in our students uh, and giving them the skills that they need to, to um, undertake uh, successful careers in, within criminal uh, justice agencies in the longer term. And we've been given the, the um, skills mark kite in recognition of the fact that our graduates have those skills that employers within the criminal justice sector are actually looking for. And certainly I'll field quite questions in a few minutes uh, uh, time, um, but what I would like to do first is hand over to my, my good friend and colleague, Dr. Balahar Sanghera, who will be talking to you today uh, in his uh, taster lecture about objectivity and values in the social science. Balahar. Okay, oh, thank you, thank you Simon. And uh, I'm going to share my lecture with you, uh, so, uh, let me just do this. Hopefully, it will come up somehow. Uh, uh, not sure how this is. There we go. So, just bear with me whilst I just uh, find how this is done. Um, ah, there we go. Okay, there we go. I hope everyone can see this. Can 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 everyone see uh, see the first one there? Yes, it's brilliant. No problem yeah, at all. Okay. Yeah. So uh, as Sam Roberts was saying, uh, so I'm going to give a, a short taster lecture uh, around objectivity and values in the social science. By social science, <clears throat> I should mean that I'm talking about array of uh, disciplines: uh, sociology, uh, psychology criminology, law, um, geography, politics. So it encompasses a broad set of disciplines. Um, and what I'd be looking at is, is how we understand facts and values within those disciplines. Um, so um, the outline of this uh, taste of lecture will, 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 uh, will address these various issues. Firstly, what kind of uh, social science do we think we're doing uh, when we are studying criminology, sociology, politics. Um, then I want to look into a bit more in depth about the nature of the statements that we engage in uh, in those various disciplines and then uh, end up by suggesting that actually there are values in our research. Okay. So firstly, I think it's, bear, it's just worth uh, 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 stating that within social science, and as I said, meaning array of different uh, disciplines, um, we tend to make a distinction between at least three types of social sciences. Um, firstly, what we kind of call uh, the standard or the, or the traditional form of under undertaking uh, social science, it's called the liberal social science. Uh, by and large, what that says is that we can distinguish facts from values. Uh, that the role of the social scientist, sociologist, uh, political scientist, uh, psychologist, is to uh, engage with the facts, the evidence, the data. And by and large, 
was the recognizing that there are values in the world, but that they should not incorporate into our analysis. So we should be by and large be very much focused around facts, evidence, data and objectivity. And people like Durkheim, Weber have articulated this position. And that's what I call the liberal social science perspective. Then the more uh, 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 a more a recent uh, approach to looking at these disciplines is what are called the critical social science. People like uh, from coming from a Marxist tradition, feminist and post-colonial writers, who argue that in that once once there are these distinctions between facts and values, nevertheless values are important in determining what we study. Uh, we should be engaging with the with with the issues that causes people uh, uh, suffering and uh, uh, topics of injustice. So exploitation in the workplace, sexual and uh, racial discrimination. These are things that writers, scholars engage in because they recognize these are important issues that we should be grappling with. And then finally, uh, what I would call more recent version of social science is called the postmodern social science. This argues that that the distinction between facts and values don't really exist. Uh, that actually that uh, uh, the whole notion of facts is always based on uh, one's interest and power. So you can't really make a distinction between facts and values. There are no truths. Uh, social reality is constructed according to uh, one's interest. So one person's understanding of reality, truth, objectivity, is to the other person just sets of values. And, like, and, and so there are these, uh, uh, so they don't make these kind of uh, distinctions or would recognize them to be quite relative. Okay, so that's the kind of uh, uh, backdrop upon which I'm going to be then talking about um, uh, the idea of values and objectivity. What, what do we actually mean by objectivity and values? And what kind of social science do we think we are doing? Okay, so I'm going to kind of make this interactive a bit. Um, um, so, uh, uh, so my question that, that I have for you is, uh, what kind of topics do, we, do, we, do you engage in or investigate in sociology, psychology, politics, criminology, law, and, and geography, and so on. And why do you think you investigate those topics? So if I can just make this slightly interactive, <laughs> uh, can I just invite someone, uh, Jyoti maybe, uh, if you say, if you <laughs> what do you think you, what kind of topics do you investigate um, in your uh, uh, studies? And why do you think you investigate those topics? I think the most interesting part about the subjects and the disciplines you're showing is the understanding of why or even how we do certain things. And I think that's a fascinating thing, that it's to find the triggers that make people do things, and, you know, that make people either be nice, be kind, be horrible, be racist, be sexist, you know, commit crime. And I don't, I, 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 I'm not sure I have this nature versus nurture gene and I just want to know. And that's why I think this is so interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, no. Those are, those are good points there, Jyoti. Uh, can you say what kind of topics you investigate in your, in your, in your studies? I mean, what is, what is it that you investigate? Uh, um, what kind of things have you written on essays or what have you studied in, um, in your uh, studies so far? In the psychology element of this, which is part of the reason why I'm doing an access course, um, and the psychology element of it is really, it, it's, it's triggered me in so many ways to investigate what is men mental health and mental illness. And um, I had to do, recently I did an essay on kleptomania, which was just oh. fascinating. Mm. Because in some respects, people think it's the most exploited defense and legal systems throughout the world and it is even encountered as a defense and other people see it as something quite serious you know as a, as a and it was just it was amazing such conflicting and we have to look at a cult, cross-cultural 
So we would look at what kleptomania meant in the States, what it means in Australia, then go to the third, third world country and see what it means there. And it, it was just amazing. You know, it just, I couldn't stop reading about it. All right. Okay. So you so you studied uh, uh, mental mental uh, mental illness. You said. Yeah. And what do you think you What do you think you you studied that? Well, what was the reason for for looking? Um, it was a, it was a unit of the course. The health, it's an access to healthcare and nursing professionals. Um, and I wanted to go to uni, which is why I said that I would do this access course, not because I wanted to go to be a healthcare professional. Um, and the sub topic of it that's really got me. There is three parts. It's either psychology, biology, or professional studies. Well, the part that's really riveted me has been psychology, um, particularly the tutor as well. She's she's she loves the fact if you participate and interact and show interest, she just just gives you as much information as you can cope with. It's brilliant. Right. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, okay. So. Um, I think one of the reasons why we study mental mental illness is because we want to understand uh, why people are unhappy, why people are suffering, so that we can then bring about some sort of treatment to to ensure that there are things that uh, we can do to ensure that they become better in some form, in 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 in, in one way or or another. And I think one of the strangest things, though, yeah. that that I've learned through psychology is is what is the definition of normal and abnormal? Yeah. So these are these issues about what does it mean to be yeah. well. Uh, so um, and 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 these are are objects of 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 debate. So if I can just finally then go on, I mean um, with my next slide there, and in the middle you can you can see that we do study in psychology, for instance, uh, mental illness because we want to strive for a healthy living, whatever that means. I mean, that's highly contested, but we do recognise that certain lifestyles or certain way of existence does lead to well-being. Others are likely to restrict our well-being, are likely to cause suffering. Now, and, and that's why we, we study uh, mental illness. And if I can look at some of the other topics that we investigate, for example, in sociology, we study social class. Well, why is it that we study social class? Yes, we may study it because it's in the curriculum and we are told to study it, for sure. But we also study it because we also think that inequality is wrong or unjust. People shouldn't be born into different classes, different life chances. Uh, why do we study capitalism within sociology? A lot of people have written on the nature of capitalism. Well, partly because uh, some writers, Marxists, uh, argue that, that uh, capitalism brings about exploitation, alienation in the workplace. And they want to investigate about how uh, we can eradicate or minimize uh, this form of uh, exploitation. Housing uh, within social policy is studied because we recognize that a lot of people are homeless or have very cramped or live in cramped conditions. So what is, this, what is it that we can do in public social policy to ensure that people have better accommodation that meet their needs? In politics, we study democracy or the nature of protest. Well, again, what, what's the reason behind that? In part, because we recognize that while democracy may not be the perfect uh, 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 political system or regime, it nevertheless is one which promotes liberty and, and, and autonomy. And we want to study how it is that citizens can uh, 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 put forward their legitimate demands upon the state. That's why we are interested in protest. We don't believe in an authoritarian, we don't think an authoritarian a state in which restricts people's voices is a good society or a just society. And likewise, uh, uh, Simon earlier on talked about within our modules, we study prisons. Well, why do we study prisons? In part, because I think we are interested in uh, how we can protect uh, not only the, the, uh, the people, the, the victims, uh, uh, to give victims a sense of justice, but also to ensure that prisoners who are incarcerated, that they do have rights uh, 
uh, uh, within, within the prisons. So we are interested in all these things because we want to ensure people's well-being, sense of justice, uh, sense of uh, 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 dignity in which uh, they, they, they have. So in all these topics, values are important. They may not be explicit because we invariably look at, 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 at the uh, evidence or the figures, but they are there if you uh, drill down. Now, uh, oh, sorry, I'm just, I don't know, my, my, my screen has frozen here a bit. Uh, there we go. Okay, there we go. So in, um, within, within, social, within social science, we think we, we typically uh, think that we make two kinds of statements positive statements and normative statements. Positive statements are statements about how the world is. So uh, uh, we can often we make a correct positive statement, right? Today is, is, is Thursday. That would be a correct positive statement. It is how the world is. There are more than 10 people in this virtual meeting. Uh, that is not <laughs> a true statement. Right? Uh, the world is not like that. Um, so, so although it is, it, is, it is an example of a positive statement, it's an example of a false positive <laughs> statement. We live in London, uh, some of us do, so, so that's one in which it is applicable to others, uh, to some, but not, uh, but not uh, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to other members. In this, in this meeting. But positive statements are about how the world is or is not, as the case may be. Normative statements are about how the world ought to be, right? Which is distinct from how the world is, how it ought to be. So we can make the statement something like, we should all speak French, right? We, all, this is, we, we are imagining ourselves how the world ought to be like in some future utopia. Um, we can say that uh, another thing we may want to make is animal testing is wrong and ought to be banned. Right? Now these are contentious, these are content contentious uh, statements and like with the uh, positive statement they can also be up for debate about uh, grammar schools should be eliminated. That's another normative statement. And within our studies, school, colleges, and also I think in some sense universities, we are taught to stick to the data, stick to the evidence, and avoid value as much as possible. Try to be as objective and scientific as possible. That's uh, that's uh, the usual way we undertake social science. There are positive statements, there are normative statements, and by and large we should stick to the former, i.e. how the world is. Uh, uh, ensure that, uh, uh, that your research is evidence-based. Uh, the policy that you're rec recommending is based on evidence, data, and not on some values. Leave the values to philosophers, right? You are social scientists, objective, rigorous, uh, uh, in interrogate your data. Okay, well, however, <laughs> in reality, the most interesting statements that we made, it's not about the day of the week, but it's actually some of these statements four that, I, that I've, I've picked out for you, which combines both normative and positive statements together. They're simultaneously both. They can't be distinguished, right, between either one or the other. They are simultaneously both. Right? These are the more interesting uh, statements, which, which, which avoids the two extremes, right, the positive and the normative. They're more in the middle, right, the gray area, the middle area, these statements. These are mixed statements. So let me give you some, some, some examples there. So for instance, 20% uh, of the world population uh, uh, live on less than one pound a day. That's both a positive statement, how the world is. It is like this. You know, there are 
20% of the world population do live on less than one pound a day. But it's also simultaneously a normative statement. Because what he's saying is the world ought not to be like this. That the world at the moment in which there are 20%, uh, almost uh, uh, 2 billion people uh, living in abject poverty, we should not be condoning this kind of world. We should be offering another kind of world, a different kind of world to the world as it is. We should be aspiring to a different world. Another statement that we would want to make, uh, that we also make in social science, is one in five women experience sexual violence since the age of 16. That's both a factual statement, i.e. a positive statement, that there are about 20% of the uh, population uh, of, of, of women who do uh, experience uh, 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 abuse, domestic violence, harassment, bullying at home and at the workplace. Uh, but if we also recognise that this ought not to be the case. It ought not to be like this. So it's both a positive statement, i.e. it gives various numbers, but also it's a normative statement about how we should uh, aspire a world in which we eradicate uh, this kind of uh, uh, sexual violence. Another one, slightly more contentious, is that 10% of the most wealthiest individual possess about 50% of the total wealth in the UK. This huge class inequality that, um, that exists in the UK. Now, this is a factual statement. It is uh, 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 evidence that there are extreme inequality, class inequality, that the most, uh, the top 20% do earn over half of their wealth in the UK. The question then is, do we think this is right? Should we be aspiring to this? And people who make these kinds of statements are also saying that this is a, uh, that we should not be having this kind of world. It should be a world in which there is greater equality of wealth. And then you can talk about the other statement that I made there about uh, uh, women who undertake care for their uh, uh, children and elderly parents. We are recognizing that, children, that, that our women do engage in most of this care work, but also recognize that whilst, whilst this is good, it's also slightly a bit more contentious because it's also saying, well, where are the men in this care work as well? Uh, and then uh, veganism and vegetarianism contributes to sustainable uh, planet. Well, it is factually correct. Veganism uh, and vegetarian does do that. As a vegan, I do believe this to be the truth. Uh, but uh, but uh, what I also, uh, uh, in making this statement, it's a factual statement. It's also saying that we should be doing more so that more people become vegetarians and vegans as well. Okay, so this gives you an idea that a lot of the statements that we make in social sciences are actually mixed statements and not uh, uh, this either this positive statements or just or just the uh, normative statement. So what all these statements do is they identify people's needs, human needs, identify the conditions under which people uh, uh, experience well-being, um, in which they experience suffering, in which people undertake uh, 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 compassion, care, uh, and undertake uh, uh, charitable giving in order to ensure that people live their lives with dignity and well-being as, as, as much as possible. So what these, and these concepts that, I, that I've given you there, human needs, um, uh, well-being, inequality, suffering, human flourishing, these are both descriptive and normative uh, because they, they not only describe how things are, but they also describe how, ought, how things ought to be. So the, uh, as I said in the example about the world poverty, I act both as an observer in recognizing that 20% of the population, 20% of the world population live in poverty, but also as a concerned individual, as a, as a citizen of the individual, saying that we should be striving towards ending this kind of uh, uh, world suffering. 
So what we then have is uh, what I would call a value-laden science. Right? It's not one in which uh, we, are, we are told to be objective and, and, and don't bring values into your analysis, i.e. You just stick to the facts, but rather what I'm saying is that values are important in identifying facts. We can't get rid of values. Values are an in inherent part of what we do. It's an inherent part of, of, of our observations. So this idea of what Weber once called trying to striving for a value-free sociology, it's just not possible. Anyone who tries to tell us just stick to the facts, stick to the data, is missing an important part of our inquiry, our method, which is the values that we bring in to our work, into our analysis. So let me uh, kind of, uh, I've, I've a few more moments here. So, uh, and so I will, I will, I will end uh, with a couple of more slides. But look, here, here are two statements about the Holocaust, right? One of them says, uh, the first one statement says, well, many hundreds of thousands died in the Nazi concentration camps. The second statement says many hundreds of thousands were systematically terminated in the Nazi concentration camps. Now I would invite you then to say which of these statements is better than the other? Just B. Sorry? B. B, Jyoti. Okay, yeah. why? Because it has, it, it carries the gravitas of how atrocious the topic is whereas the first one feels like it's being very matter of fact it's just a statement the second one systematically exterminated just makes you feel that this was so wrong precisely well done uh, that's exactly what i called the 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 uh, the answer that i was looking for that it was wrong that, that, that people just didn't die of natural causes, right? Which is the, what, you, what you get in the uh, first statement. That this was systematically, it was injustice inflicted on, 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 on various individuals, uh, 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 Jewish people, communists, gays, uh, gypsies, who were systematically brought into the concentration camps and unfairly, unjustly uh, 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 murdered. And, that's exactly what you get. So our values helps to identify the facts. So our values are important because they help us to identify which of the statements is more accurate than the other. Uh, and as I said there, uh, prisoners didn't, in the concentration, didn't just die uh, naturally or killed randomly, but they were deliberately uh, uh, targeted and unfairly and unjustly killed, as you rightly point out, uh, Jyoti. So these statements, these values that we have, they are what we call evaluative terms. They help to strengthen our descriptions and our truth claims. They're not extras, as sometimes people like to imagine them to be. They're an inherent part of giving a good description of the world. They are what what, what uh, various scholars have called thick ethical descriptions. They are descriptions. They describe the world, but they're also evaluative. They're also ethical because they give us, an, they help to identify the nature of the injustices or the suffering that, that, uh, that we are trying to analyze and explain. Now, so, um, so trying to, uh, as I said, like what tends to happen with a um, uh, liberal social science approach, trying to remain neutral or trying to refrain from values, I think is just wrong. Because it misses out why we are concerned and bothered about the world. Why the world is, frankly, messy, shitty, bad, unjust. We are agitated, we are concerned. That's why we are we are interested in exploring the social sciences, exploring the world, the, the nature of the social world, because we are, because we are concerned individuals, concerned citizens. We recognize the inequalities, the suffering, the injustices that is taking place, and we want to do something about it, whether it be in terms of activism, whether in terms of doing research, 
or whether just merely just reading up about it. So we get angry and frustrated about class inequality. We get upset and disappointed by the various discriminations that take place. And we probably feel extremely guilt-ridden and distressed by global uh, poverty and malnutrition. So the point that I'm trying to make here, uh, hopefully that you get by the end of this, uh, is that our judgments, our values, our evaluations are as important as the facts and the observations and the objectivity that we uh, uh, bring into our work. Now, I should say that this, this doesn't mean that, that whilst I, 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 I point out that evaluations, making the distinction between good and bad, just and just, uh, right and wrong, uh, whilst these evaluations are an important part of what we do, that can also be quite difficult. Right? And that's why a lot of social scientists, uh, sociologists, criminologists, uh, psychologists are passionate about their work because it brings up uh, how values are important in their work and, and where there are disagreements. So Jyoti, you know, you talked earlier on about uh, mental illness and what did it mean to be normal? What did it mean to be abnormal? Well, that's exactly why people investigate those, uh, that particular topic and why they're passionate about trying to understand where the line is between normality and abnormality. Because they want to understand passionately what is it about people's lifestyle that brings about well-being, but also understanding that certain lifestyles, whilst maybe not normal, but can also be quite enjoyable as well, quite uh, 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 enabling people to, to be thriving. So I just end with, with, with these uh, three topics there, I won't, um, uh, as, as you can see. But uh, so for example, the, the topic on, on refugees and migrants uh, into, into Europe. You know, you've got one group of individuals, uh, scholars, think tanks, scientists, who argue that we should be allowing more refugees and migrants into, into Europe. You know, uh, we don't, uh, there are plenty of spaces in Europe to allow a migrant into the country. And we should be doing our part as, 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 as part of a global society to ensuring the well-being of other people that live in the global south. We are, after all, a rich country. But there are others who passionately argue the other way, who argue, well, actually, no. What about the concerns of people already living in this country? Right? People who live in deprived areas up in the north or in the coastal areas. What is it that we're doing for them? So given that we have finite resources, surely our concern should be about the citizens that already exist, already live in, in this country, and not those that are coming new into, 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 into the UK. And these are passionate uh, debates that are determined by people having various ideas about what is right and wrong. They don't necessarily disagree about the facts, right? But what they do disagree is how we interpret those facts in relation to our values. Okay, so I think I'm going to end it there, right? And uh, because I've gone over, over my quota uh, and uh, invite Jyoti, uh, for you to give either questions, uh, a question both to Simon about the program, or uh, or to me about what I what I just said. Well, that's very kind of you, and thank you both. Um, and uh, is it Aniki as well? That's very kind of you to find the time to do this. Um, firstly, I'd like to make a point of saying a big thank you to Justine Reed, your admissions manager. She has been absolutely brilliant. Um, and she probably doesn't get much recognition, but she's been so helpful, especially over the issues with the grading and that sort of stuff. And it's been a real, it's been really reassuring. And that's what she's done, which is great. I'll let her know. She'll appreciate that. She honestly, absolutely brilliant, Niki. 
beyond brilliant. She's she's taken the mantle, she's run with it, and she's making us all feel very safe and wrapped and cosy. It's lovely, which is nice in this current time. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I think, from my perspective, I'm joining you guys uh, as a soon to be 52 year old mature student. And although um, Thomas made me feel very comfortable about the fact that I'm coming in as a mature student, I just wanted to know from you guys how you think it may be different for me coming in than it is for the people coming straight from uni, from school, etc. What I can tell you from, from our perspective is that we know that mature students tend to, to do exceptionally well in our degree programs. They come in with an experience and a worldview that uh, sometimes differs from my younger uh, students and, and it leads to, uh, to, to much more vibrant and, um, and, uh, and educational seminar discussions. Um, so I don't think I don't think that you should allow your age to be a, a, an issue of concern at all. If anything, it should be an advantage to you, Joy. Too. Well, that's really good to hear. I mean, to be fair, that's what Thomas said, um, and I, I think I think it's also I am a little bit nervous about coming as an older person. I mean, my son graduated last year, which is part of the reason why I decided it was my turn this year um, to go for it, but. Yeah, I, I am a bit nervous about it, I must admit. Don't be, don't be at all. Honestly, that, 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 there's nothing to worry about in the slightest. Um, but Bella, that's your experience with... with yeah. With um, uh, I mean, historically, uh, the social science uh, recruited from mature students anyway. Yeah. Uh, that's, how, that's how we started. Um, our program at the Medway campus was uh, specialty social sciences was largely designed to suit around uh, the needs uh, and schedules of mature students um, so I think I think I think we are well catered to accommodating you Jyoti um, and in fact from 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 my experience and I've been here for almost uh, 16 years I always uh, I, I think it's the mature students who seem to uh, uh, adapt quite well and flourish um, on on campus and do extremely well on their essays assignments and uh, get extremely good classifications at the end of the at the end of the uh, degree. Well, that's really good to know, and thank you both very much for that. What's what's an average week like? How many hours in a week are actually spent in lectures? Okay. Um, uh, just in relation to your previous point as well, uh, to let you, know, you won't be alone because uh, I would say a good 10% of our student intake are mature students. Uh, oh, that's good. So, so uh, in relation to, to um, contact hours, um, you can expect on average one lecture and one seminar with, uh, per module. Intake. So realistically, there will be about eight classroom hours a week. Um, it varies depending on the modules that you take. Some, some have, have lectures and seminars delivered in, in different ways, like workshops. But on average, um, it's about eight, hours, eight contact hours a week. But that doesn't mean that you only get eight hours of our time because you can always come and see us uh, in office hours if you like or, or make additional appointments to see lectures, lecturers and seminar leaders at times that are convenient to you. Good. Okay. It's roughly what I'm getting at the moment on the access course, because although it's full time, we only, I think we only have, um, yeah, it's about, about eight hours in total there. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I don't know what else to ask you guys. Do you have any questions for Z Z Zillan? Um, she's one of our excellent stage three students. She's in her third year. She's about to graduate this year. So she, well, well, it's all well and good for Balahar and I to tell you how amazing our, our uh, programs are. And I kind of think they are pretty good. Uh, Zillan might have a different view and, and quite often um, we can't see what it's like for students on the other side of the table. So it would be a good opportunity to ask her what it's really like to be a student on one of our programs. I think, I'm, I, think I have spoken to Zillan the last applicant's day, which I came in person on. Right. I think it was Zillan there. I'm not sure, but I think it was. But it was great to talk to the students, absolutely. Is she there? Yeah, I was at the last You were! I recognise you, yes. Yeah. 
Are you enjoying yeah, it? Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. That's why I'm just quite upset that it's ended so abruptly. I just oh. wish I had more time. But it's been really good. I've really enjoyed it. All my lectures have honestly been really excellent and really attentive because I do ask quite a lot of questions. Sound like me. That's good. <laughs> um, what are you hoping to do after this, Zina? So um, I've enjoyed the law part of my course a lot. So I've decided to go on to do a GDL at the University of Law. So kind of like What's a conversion GDL? course. GDL, sorry. What is a GDL? So it's a conversion course into, okay. into law. It's a one-year course doing just pure modules. Okay. What haven't you enjoyed about the course? What haven't I enjoyed? Um, I don't think it has much to do with the teaching. I think it's not enjoying it. It's just... Um, I just wish there was more discussions and a lot more going on in seminars and that's nothing to do with the lectures. I think students just need a bit more of a prompt uh, or they just maybe don't feel confident enough to speak. I'm not sure, but I do enjoy debates and discussions quite a lot. So I wish there was a bit more of that. That's fair. That's fair. I think a lot of people like you say are just probably a little bit too nervous to speak out or lacking confidence. Mm. Okay. No problem, Nika. You yeah. go and have your other meeting. Bless her. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Answer any questions you might have, Jossie, afterwards. Okay. No Bye. problem at all. Thank you. Thank you, Simon, Balahar, and Zilam. See you. Bye, Nikki. Bye. Well, you've all been brilliant, guys. I'm going to let you guys get on. Um, I'm going to go and sit in the garden because it's beautiful. <laughs> And Joyce, if you do have any questions at a later date, do get in touch with us. We're, we're going to be around over the entire vac it's the vacation period and then through the summer term, the, the summer vacation as well. Are so, we endeavouring to start on, I mean, I don't even know when the course starts, is it September or October? Uh, it's September, late September. Okay, okay. so we're still endeavouring for that date. Yeah. Good, absolutely brilliant. Is there, is there a sort of plan B if we don't start then? Um, there is likely to be, but they haven't informed us as yet. I know okay. there are lots and lots of discussions going on at the university. Um, All right, Mike, cause I just want to make sure we actually, even if we don't, don't start physically, that we start virtually. Uh, that's all, that will almost certainly be the case. Uh, right, okay. Tell you, that's how we ended uh, this term. We, we, we finished it virtually. Um, we were we were finding our feet there. I'll be completely honest with you. But uh, by the time the new term starts, we will probably all be much more adept at using virtual software than we have been to date. Well, I think you've been brilliant, guys. Thank you all so much for your time. Um, it's been really valuable. Really enjoyed it. Take care. Have a lovely, lovely rest of the week, and Thanks. hopefully see you all in September. See you in September. Take care. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.